Assalamu alaikum my friends how are you all doing hope you, all of you are safe at home so welcome today to the financial management fm exam structure part 1 why part 1 because part 2 of this will be coming soon right so today i'm going to discuss all the all your queries will be answered just watch this video till the end to know what is the uh, fm structure for how many marks it will be assessed what are the key areas you need to learn and how your exam will be structured so starting with fm exam structure now what is a fm exam structure duration so fm exam is for three hours but since it is a cb platform it you will get 10 minutes to read the exam instructions right next pass mark is 50 out of 100 so it's 50% for all ACCA paper. Minutes per mark. Very important that you know how many minutes exactly you have to spend per mark. It's 1.8 minutes per mark. Let's say you have a question for a 20 marks. Now how much of time you have to spend on it is only 36 minutes, not 37, 36, right? Now you can say that you can spend less than 36 or so, 35 or 34, which is okay, which is good. That means you are managing your time, but it should not be too less. Now what happens, you might be saying you are time efficient, you are saving time. What happens if I finish this in 30 minutes? Then my dear friends, let me ask you this question. If you finish it in 30 minutes, which is not possible, quite possible, because the exam has been structured that way that you will not be able to finish it in 30 minutes. And let's suppose you have finished it in 20 marks, you have finished it in 30 minutes or 25 minutes. That means you are not writing enough points. That's what it means. You are not saving time you are not writing enough points. That's the reason that is also not good. So writing too less, writing too much is not good. You should spend the 36 minutes wisely. Next, platform. It is a computer-based examination because this is an applied skill uh, paper. F1 to F9, all the F papers are computer-based examination. So you have to be, you have to learn on this platform when you practice also. Right? It's not paper-based anymore. Section A now. Coming to the exam, there are three sections. Right? The exam has a pattern is that it is divided into three sections. Section A, Section B, Section C. Now, Section A has 15 objective, OT means objective testing questions worth two marks each. That means total it will be 30 because 15 into 2, 30 marks is from Section A. Right. It's not only multiple choice questions. It's more to, more than that. We'll go to that. Right. Section B. Section B, you will get three objective test case studies. That means you will be given a case study. Three case studies will be given to you. Based on that, that uh, case, three case studies, you'll be given five questions. Right. Those five questions will be worth two marks each. So that makes it to three into five, 15, 15 into two. 30 again 30 from your section b so section is 30 marks section b is 30 marks remaining how much 30 30 60 remaining 40 marks will come from your section c which is your two constructed response questions cr means constructed response constructed response here is in here this is the area where you have to write let the answers right section c you have to write next Section A. Let's go into Section A in more detail. OTQ means Objective Test Question. The short form for that. OTQ. Right? Section A. 15 Objective Testing question, uh, testing Questions were 2 marks each. We know it. 15. So, 30 marks. So, 30 marks means how much time you have to spend on Section A. Only 54 minutes. Less than an hour. Only 54 minutes. Mark these words, my dear students. The reason why I'm telling you is because ACCA paper, whatever paper you're giving is all about time management and most of the people fail not because due to lack of knowledge, they fail because lack of time management. And FM, trust me, concept wise, uh, it might be easy, but people usually don't pass an FM compared to your account, other management accounting or performance management or tax compared to other paper fm is uh, pass rate is less that's why i'm emphasizing more on this because all these 
things matters a lot in your AFM, in your advanced level, advanced financial management. So it's a high chance, right? It's high time that you have to take. You have to learn everything here and do your best in AFM if you are planning to build a career or go in a field in finance, right? No negative marking for an incorrect answer. Usually, when if you follow the US system, you see that there are negative marking for incorrect answer in multiple choice questions, but here it is no negative marking. So that's a great news for the students. It's a relief that if you get wrong, it is zero, but no negative marking. And if it's correct, you will get two marks. Now, this OT objective test questions can come in a varying styles. Okay, what are the styles? First, multiple choice. Four choices will be given. You have to select one. Number entry. You have to write uh, write one number where you have to enter the number. That means some calculations you have to do. Pull down list. They will be given you from there. You have to pull down the list. We'll see this. There's a demo for all of this. I have copy pasted the questions from all of these types. So you can see the various styles later in this video. Multiple response where more than one answer is possible. Maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. Hot area. Hot, what is hot area? Where you have to click, press, drag and drop. We all know what is drag and drop. You drag and drop it on the right box. Right? Next, section B, case study questions. Small case study will be given here. You have to read. Right? Five case study type questions will be there. Five case study Three case studies will be there on those three case studies and each of the three five five questions will be there. So five questions on the first case study, second five questions on the second case study, another five questions on the third case study. Total 15 questions will be there worth two marks each. Okay, next you have to read a significant amount of information. You have to read the case study before you answer the right section A, no case study, right? Only multiple uh, test questions but here you have to read a case study and then answer the five questions relating to it which will be again what five OT questions OT questions means objective test questions here also same thing you have to pick out of the four the right which makes your work life easier because your writing part only comes in section C 18 minutes right why 18 minutes To answer five OT questions relating to each case because five into two right five questions worth two so ten ten marks for ten marks means what ten into 1.8 18 minutes you have to spend on one case study next rest all the tips for section A are equally applicable to section B because it is o, uh, OT questions right OT questions comes in section A also section B also so whatever the variable styles which comes in section A of OT questions drag and drop hot area multiple response comes in section B also coming to section C this is an area where most of the candidates struggle to score marks because here you have to write section A and B you anyway can play around and somehow get the marks because options are there sometimes uh, fluke right by fluke also you get the right answer but not in section C section C you have to be very serious you have to actually write you have to do calculations lots of calculations in section C and also you have to write not just calculations you have to write also so it is 20 marks each two questions will be there two constructed response questions will be there both the two so each for 20 marks so right written response rather than being OT questions this is not over the uh, objective test questions like not like section A and B you have to write right for if you have to do any calculations or computations spreadsheet will be provided to you you have to do your work in the spreadsheet you have to use spreadsheets for calculations in FM and if it's discursive style where you have to write sentences word processing all this will be there but you just have to know how to use the package, how to use the software. You have to practice on this. You have to practice on your spreadsheet and your word processing. Right? And remember one thing. Computation when you do, you cannot do the way you want. 
not like in any freestyle you have to use the standard format which they use which the examiners use how will you know which is the format will be given in the textbook and you will see in the marking scheme also of the past papers and the revision kit when you see the answer in the answer you will see a format is there that format you have to apply you have to use that format let's say you have to calculate net present value i have i have demonstrated this also so you can see later in this video how you can use a standard form okay standard format means there are some areas not everywhere in some area you have the flexibility the way you want you can write but some area maybe you have to follow a formula or a table is there this is how you start with this item then you go with the next item so there's a format fixed format is there you have to apply that format according to the case study you can adapt change here and there but the format remains the same standard format next layouts it will be given to you in the answers in the books and in the model answers you will see it so you don't have to worry about it what is the standard format should i memorize or not once you start practicing on it over and over again that standard format will be fixed in your mind you will be able to do it next ensure you learn all formulas as not all formulas will be given in the exam please don't depend on that formula sheet in the exam paper which you will get assuming that all the formulas will be given to you so don't, you don't have to memorize any formula no there are only few formulas which is there which is specially uh, specifically taught to you in fm only those formulas other than those some formulas are uh, pre executed formula that means uh, they are assuming that you know these formulas because you came for fm or maybe from your earlier uh, studies and all those you have to know it right now eight tips to study fm what are this eight effective tips that if you crack this you have to crack this to pass fm in first attempt fm is not a tough subject at all trust me guys when i'm saying this fm is not at all a subject hard subject it is in fact if i say it is one of the easiest subject to pass in first attempt the reason why students fail is because they are not following the simple tips small tips small advices they they uh, they you know they ignore it they think there is very small nothing to worry i will crack the exam and do this do that i have not have the thing overconfidence so starting with the first one what is the first tip make your own time table yes friends you have to make your own time table why did i say own time table see every one of you have different uh, lifestyles different schedules and all some of you might be studying in the morning some of you might be studying full time some of you are doing part time job so you have to manage your time effectively according to that you know what's the best time for you to study i cannot force someone okay uh, let's say i used to study a certain time so i cannot force this thing on others on you right that you have to study no because everyone has their own strengths their own weaknesses their own time and all now for me this was not a big challenge the reason why because i was a full time student right i'm a full time student so it wasn't a big issue for me i could study the whole day i could manage but since i was a night student so i made sure that most of the things which i had to study if i had any hard part to go about i studied it in the night because i was a night person right i could stay awake in the morning i used to do if i had to study sometimes in the morning also then i will i'll be doing some light stuff and all right where i don't have to focus too much so you have to be very wise and effective and if you i have already made a timetable for uh, i think a few students who gave uh, fm in march and also december 2020 for this two badges i have made the timetable already i have the timetable with me so if any one of you wants the timetable do contact me on sabiakta0@gmail.com drop a mail and i will send you the timetable right i have made the timetable in such a way that you will be able to finish it in the good 3 months right i am not sure i think for uh, may uh, sorry june exam i think it will be little behind because this was made earlier but you can adjust here and there and see that it covers all the time and then you will be able to give your exam in june right i didn't uh, adjust it for june exam but this is the timetable it uh, this timetable is made for a normal 3 month if you are taking a 3 month duration to study fm and give right so but you have to make a timetable that's a must in fact in any paper whatever study you do in life not only ssc any any subject you do any study you do timetable has to be there own timetable 
some of you might be studying in the college it's not enough just studying in the college or your tutor or just watching my youtube videos or any videos you watch on youtube or you study will not help you unless you make your own timetable and study effectively on this time you have to stick to that time my dear friends most of you don't do that in fact i was I'm, i was planning also i'm working on that still i had some issue which came up so i couldn't do it i i was planning to make this video of how to study effectively since i was always the top achiever right from my school days so i know the importance of how uh, effective study most of the students they struggle one of the student uh, in fact i think mailed me few days back commented me that uh, she is she studies so much but she does not pass with good marks why is it so there are so many things which i want to tell you which i have to share with my uh, viewers which my, with my audience so that they study and you know they come up with flying colors right it's nothing very tough it's from my own personal experience and i have studied other i have talked with other high achievers who always get great marks but they don't study day and night as you think right they follow some effective guidelines so i'm sure i'll be soon uploading that also right maybe it will take some uh, good amount of time i will take then i will come up with that as well how to study effective study how you have to do pass with good uh, marks right and how to be a good achiever high achiever and all okay so about that we'll talk later now come into time table yes you have to have a time table you have to have a fixed time table but you have to be flexible also what do what do i mean by that see fixed time table means if you are planning that today i will study sunday let's say sunday to wednesday or uh, sunday to uh, maybe let's say maybe you are studying one day one day you are doing a or something like that so let's say sunday you have some plans or you fell sick right that time you should not force yourself okay now is my time to study fm this is the time 9 to 8 sorry uh, 9 to 11 let's say assume you are sick or you had some invitation which came up some important event you had to go for that which you can miss so that time you cannot force yourself okay i have to do fm 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 trust me on this it will stress you up you will go in a panic mode you will feel so demotivated that you missed that one day what happens the next day also you will start missing because you will next day you will be working on covering up that previous day so it comes on accumulating accumulating and then you know it keeps on going like that don't do this mistake let's say you have some issue whichever came up okay don't panic your action has to be what is the next step how can i fit this time which i lost which i couldn't study fm maybe i was sick or had some issue something else was there you have to plan how to fix this time into some other time table some other time some other schedule of yours maybe somewhere you are free somewhere maybe 2 uh, hours in between you are somewhere free or 1 hour or less than 30 minutes also you are free somewhere so you can go and fix that there there you have to be flexible you cannot be rigid and you cannot be fixed saying that no 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 i only have to study this time this is the time i cannot study after than that these are all your limiting beliefs which you have set for yourself that i cannot study this time i am a night person so i cannot study in the morning no trust me if you say to yourself i can that means you actually can study it's just that you have already believed that you cannot so you have to be flexible like that otherwise you cannot not only in fm in any any paper any subject you take you have to be time table you have to make you have to cover your syllabus uh, in three months miss you have to cover but how you do it is up to you if you have missed it you have to make it up right next i'm sorry for that long uh, by the way you know talk about it on the first point itself i will try to finish this video as soon as possible but these are some important points which today people have to know it right ssc is not a joke trust me so coming to point 2 when you are going through a revision kit or past papers then time yourself this is a key point again students are missing on this they think just by going through the answer or reading the answer or trying to memorize the answer will help it will not help you you have to go through revision kit all the revision kit questions you have to go through all the past papers at least twice okay if not all the questions twice but at least second time when you go pick few of the questions from each topic and try to cover if not all the questions but when you do the questions you have to time yourself time yourself means let's say you are answering section a question which is for 30 marks 30 marks means 54 minutes so when you 
you have to have a clock or alarm keep an alarm or tell someone to tell you when 54 minutes is over at home also when you are practicing you have to time yourself from day one because this is a habit you are building trust me on this when you are thinking that in the exam you will time it will not happen to you naturally it will not happen to you you cannot do it this you have to practice from day one timing yourself even though it's a small line one paragraph or one calculation one question of revision kit you still have to time yourself timing is very important initially let me tell you the struggle is this few days you'll be struggling to manage time it's okay perfectly all right you might take more than that cool you might even look the answer because because i know i have gone through that stage so i know most of the students have this tendency to without even attempting they go and check the answer and then they come and write the answer there thinking they have actually understood the concept but you haven't understood the concept you're trying to memorize that answer you have to question yourself why this answer how this answer came from where which tech uh, which idea which concept which concept says this from textbook this is how you study but before coming to that first few days you will be struggling i know but later once you keep practicing practicing do, timing yourself and doing it you'll be getting wrong answers also initially it does not matter still do it still do it you will see the improvement initial gradually you will see the improvement you will see it in yourself you yourself will feel that yes my answers are improving i am getting better with the time i am getting more confident now right so time yourself timing is important third entire syllabus needs to be covered don't ask me what is coming ma'am what is not coming which area should i focus more on which no whole area needs to be covered i have told this in this video i am announcing again so don't comment me or don't email me asking which area will come ma'am i i just want to focus only on the main areas i don't have much time so what were you doing all this time when you had the time right about reading the entire textbook whether you have to read the textbook or not some uh, tutors or some lecturers might say reading the textbook is not necessary you understand the concept in the class that's enough but i from my personal experience i want to recommend right I don't say it's a must. I say it is advisable that at least, at least, read the textbook, entire textbook. Anyway, you will not be reading the entire textbook in day one only. You will be reading the textbook throughout. Like when you are doing a certain topic, you will be reading on that topic only. So each day like that, you can read the textbook. Reading textbook will not take so much of time. Trust me on this. You are solving questions and understanding a concept takes more time. Reading textbook is nothing. So read the textbook at least once. The reason is in the textbooks, the way they have explained is much easier. Maybe sometimes you're struggling with something. You have been taught something in the class or some, maybe you have watched my video, or some other video and you got confused. So reading that textbook will help you. Maybe you will be getting, uh, maybe that confusion will go. You never know. So read the textbook at least once. It gives you confidence that you have covered the whole area. Right? You will not have this doubt in yourself, right? Most of you, how many of you have this doubt in yourself when you go to the exam? Oh, I should have read the textbook once. Maybe this came from the textbook. I didn't read this part of textbook. I saw it was there in the textbook. So, you know, you should not feel this uh, guilt or this uh, regret. You should not regret that I didn't read the textbook. Why I didn't read? So, at least read the textbook. At least you know in each part of the textbook from which part a question came or what are the areas which could be covered. Once you read the textbook, you will be feeling very confident. Anything comes, you'll be able to tell. So that's the advantage of reading the textbook. It could be Kaplan, it could be BPP, anything but only one. Refer only one textbook. Some of the students I have seen, they refer the two, three textbooks they take. BPP, Kaplan and uh, some other. There are so many things. Don't do this. Why? Wasting time. Because it is the same concept which is explained in different books in different ways. So don't waste time on this coming to number four practice on cbe yes you have to practice on cbe computer based examination but when do you have to practice after you finish the whole syllabus after you finish the whole syllabus because there's no point right when you write in the syllabus you will anyway not pass the mock exam when you write in the you have nothing to write you don't know how to write if you don't finish the whole syllabus you need to finish the whole syllabus to do all the three sections because section A, section B is on what multiple choice will come. So how will you answer? It will cover the whole syllabus anyway, even if you don't have to write in section C. Coming B, focus more on MS Word and MS Excel. 
you have to practice from day one practice means what see well, some of you or in fact most of you i would say good news is we are pro in ms word and ms excel if you are pro already before before even doing fm maybe from your school and all you have uh, you work heavily on ms word and ms excel you have this uh, speed you you type very fast you have a typing speed even in ms excel also if you do formulas and functions you have you have at a, you at a very high speed so all this will be a plus sign for you when you come to fm because you can save time you can do more calculations in a short time and you can type fast you have to be able to type fast and do calculations at a very high speed in ms excel you should be able to do it you have to time yourself how much time you are taking so practice even though you have nothing uh, even though day one you cannot do anything from uh, fm because since you have just started the syllabus you don't know what it just type anything you can see uh, any book or anything you will be having in front of you just take your acca fm book textbook just start writing you know every day type 30 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes you type and see the speed every day you will be getting faster and faster faster and faster i will not say right because this is not a paper exam if it was paper then i, I would say yes right but this is computer based exam so you have to type you have to do the formulas there is no other way that you can escape from this in fact i will make a video in part 2 right where i will explain also how to use ms word and ms excel how to do it in cb platform but that will be later right first we'll finish the main points the key areas next practice both calculations and discussion questions not only one of them see that i have highlighted it in red for you to see both calculations and discussion questions need to be practiced not just calculations or not just a discussion most of you some of you i don't know what happens is if you are good in calculations you only practice calculations and some of you you are good in discussion you only calculate practice uh, discussion and calculations you don't pay focus on it has to be balanced remember fm is both calculations and discussions your when you study also when you practice also it has to be balanced that's how you are going to pass fm you're not going to pass fm if you're strongly good in calculations only let's say you are very uh, you are 90% good in calculations but discussion you are only 20% do you think you will pass fm with the strategy or let's say is the other way around you are 80% good in discussion calculations only 10% or 15% good do you think you will be able to pass with this combination fm no forget about fm if you cannot pass fm think about afm when you go to the advanced level how will you pass that level that's more advanced level right so all these things you need to take seriously right from this stage foundation stage you have to practice calculations you have to be it could be 50 50 or it could be 60 40 but it cannot be 80 20 like that so your calculation discussion how will you know which area you need to practice for it is simple when you do calculations when you practice you see which one you are able to do comfortably more which one is matching with the answer is it your calculation is it your discussion you yourself will know it inside everyone knows let's say for me i am a calculation person right so i know my strength is in calculation there is no point of me repeating calculation 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 i know is my strength even if i don't practice also i will be able to solve calculations i know that much confidence and faith i have in myself i am not boasting about myself and i am not trying to say something i am a big this or that the reason i'm saying you this here is to tell you i'm giving an example through me i can tell only about myself right so so you have to learn from what i'm trying to say calculation i'm good discussion i'm not so good in but since my weakness i have discovered that it was discussion what i did was i worked on the discussion part i started writing 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 calculation i, I can anyway solve it i had that much faith but discussion i was not so confident so i started working on that weakness why because when you work on your weaknesses only you will be able to pass it's not only working on your strength because your strength it's already your strength right what is there to work on weaknesses only you have to work and improve it to that level where even though you are, you are not as good as calculation but at least you'll be able to match it up to that level maybe you are 90% good in calculations before maybe you were 20% good in discussion but now after practicing you have reached 80% or 70% you are good in discussion now so 90 80 90 70 is fairly good enough right isn't it so that's what i'm trying to emphasize here so 
0.7. Memorize formulas ratios, especially relating to FMs. There are some ratios which is specifically relating to FM, like financial ratios, like financial gearing, debt equity. So gearing is one such ratio. Then we have equity ratio. Then we have investor ratios, right? EPS, equity, uh, earnings per share, price earnings ratio, PE ratio. All this type of ratios are specifically relating to FM. Formulas are not there. You have to memorize the formula. You have to know it. Point number eight, when self-studying, make sure you are guided by someone experienced. Yes. Most of the students, they ask me, they mail me. I get messages throughout my social media everywhere. Ma'am, uh, what would you advise? Can I do FM or can I do any other subject? There are some more subjects to not only FM. Can I do it with self-study? Will I be able to pass it? See, my answer will always be yes, you can do self-study, but not alone. What does it mean? You can do self-study, but you have to be guided by someone experienced. My dear friends, this is an area where most of you, the students go wrong. They take it very lightly because we always have, you know, we are young. We always think that we can do anything. We can do everything, right? We have this good brains. That's why we came to SSCA. We can solve anything. We can do everything on our own. That's, we are overconfident. It's not just you people. I was also there in that chair. So I know how it feels. I was also overconfident for which I had to have a pay a heavy price and I had. I will someday make a video of my ACCA journey, how I came to ACCA, what motivated me and then what, what were my struggles, my journey overall. I will make a video on that. Side. So there I will be discussing more about it. But for here, right now, when you're doing self-study, make sure someone experience. Now, how can you be sure? It could be anyone. Nowadays, uh, online, everything is online, right? Because of COVID-19. So maybe some of your friends, you could ask who is who have already passed this uh, paper. It's always better to ask from experience means not your friend. See, your friend, you cannot uh, ask for guidance. Why? If you and your friend are giving FM at the same time, you're studying parallelly, right? You both, none of you have passed yet. You are about, you're giving paper. You are studying. It's not a good advice that you go and ask your friend to guide you. Why? Because your friend has still is in the same position as you. Your friend has not passed that paper. He or she has not gone through that stage. So he or she does not know what all it takes to pass. Someone experienced means it has to be someone who has already passed FM. It could be your senior someone. It could be your friend. Maybe they, he or she has passed before because you might be giving different papers. Right? She passed FM, now you're about to give FM. So then that friend could be a guidance to you. Or it could be any tutor or lecturer, you know, right? Who can give you good advice, who can guide you. Right? And if you want guidance from me, you're welcome anytime. You can mail me, subject to zero at gmail.com and ask for any doubts and all. I will be able to guide you. And eight tips. No, there is nine tips. This is a bonus tip. What is it? Any guesses? Audience? No. Okay, so let me reveal this. Sleep well. Don't compromise on health. It looks little weird, right? Out of the box. How sleep comes. Why sleep is important. That has nothing to do with study. So my dear friends, what happens is when you study ACCA, but especially ACC I can talk about because I don't know about any other thing. That's what I have. The journey I know in ACC. What do you do is students, they have this, you know, ACC means study. ACC means 24-7 study. So study, 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 and what? Go mad before the exam. Trust me on this. Don't laugh. You might be laughing. This actually happens to students. It has gone through that. Right? Students actually started towards the exam when the exams are about to come one week before the exam or two weeks before the exam. They are held this. What? They're compromising on health. They're not sleeping well because they think if they sleep, they're wasting time. They're not able to study. So study, 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 sleep only two hours, sleep only four hours, sleep only three hours. Do you think this is an effective way? I always have this uh, goal 
no matter what never compromise on sleep yes you you have heard me right most of the people say that you have to compromise you have to work hard work hard what work hard if you have not slept well how will you work hard if you have not slept well do you think your brain will work your brain will function uh, properly healthily if you are not able to if you have haven't slept well the last night how can you focus in the morning how can you pressurize yourself or force yourself or even motivate see motivation and all is another level that is the next step but first you have to sleep well you have to take care of your health then only everything else comes study don't take this acca study very seriously that it don't let it affect your health that's what i mean to say at the end of the day at the end of the day you have to be happy you have to enjoy this process what you are doing you have to sleep well there's no compromise till date today people who are very close to me my close friends know that what, no matter whatever happens however whatever i have whether it's my studies whether it's my assignment whether it's my project whether it's my exam never compromise on sleep first if i have to select vitamin that i have to study the whole day today whole night let's say there's a scenario this is for your understanding purpose right for you to say the importance of it if i have to select that whether to sleep i on one area i have to sleep and the other thing i have to study 3 hours or 4 hours tonight i will first choose sleep over study the reason is because when i sleep well then i can work 10 times or 5 times 20 times faster then when i didn't sleep well and i tried to pull it off when i tried to study without sleeping thinking that i'll be able to study everything and then i will sleep nicely which is a wrong strategy my dear friends it's a wrong technique sleep well you don't have to do more you don't have to motivate you don't have to focus too much it automatically will come to you trust me on this because i have tested all this on myself i know the day when i sleep well everything will fall on the place automatically i don't even have to do any work i don't have to motivate myself i don't have to rush through everything happens smoothly but i have to sleep well i i have never compromised on sleep no matter what i can compromise on food yes but i don't advise obviously that uh, don't eat food and all eat food sleep well then come and study if you can do you can be more effective 10 times 20 times your brain will work fast especially when you wake up fresh the first few hours you'll be very energetic you can concentrate that's why you see our schools and all are in the mornings why because that is a very good time for students to absorb things because they have just woke up and when you just woke up remember it's better that when you wake up have some uh, breakfast or something and study why because for that day your brain is empty you just woke up right you are fresh your brain is empty for that day you have no stress no tension no pressure nothing so when you study that time your mind is free you can absorb as much as possible that time you can take information you can retain information for longer when you study fm that time not only fm any paper any subject even school students also even college students this is applicable even for acc student any level you are whether you are bachelor degree or post degree post graduate or any level you are this technique applies till date it's right it could be any time when you maybe afternoon you slept for some time you took a nap and then you woke up better to study after, as soon as you wake up have some food and study rather than doing any other activity and then studying or then or uh, th- doing everything then coming to study at the end of the day when everything is over all the activities are over that's not a good strategy you will be very tired you will be very stressed out you will not be able to study at that time because what happens is your our mind is conditioned our minds are conditioned you will be able to sleep you want to sleep you cannot handle it that's the reason that you have set yourself that you, i will study 10 hours 25 hours but you are not able to study not even 2 hours also when you are sleepy it's not a good thing to study i never advise when you are sleepy go and study when you are sleepy close a book and go and sleep forget about everything forget about everything and another thing i know this conversation is going a bit long but it's important also for you students nothing is benefiting me i have already got my benefit i have benefited by it now it's for you the young generation to benefit right i could just quickly finish this video and then i would say blah 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 go through this go through this 
but when i teach it's you know it's not just for finishing something fast 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 quick 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 there's no quick fixes for me when you have to study with me you have to take the long term because these are the ways you are going to be a successful student for your long life it works all this works this is not short something which only works in the short term it will work in the long term also so don't compromise on health if you have been compromising till now because no one have guided you or no one have told you anything then don't worry at least take that first step today take a small step today to change it change that habit first is my health my sleep my health then comes my study it's not it should not be the other way around it should not be your study first and then you will sleep no first is your sleep your health your mental mind has to be good then you study right if i have to talk about how to study what are the maybe i think one two hours or three hours i can go on speaking but i will not i will end it here hope that you have got all these nine points and you can take a screenshot of all the slides since this is a video running right next we have the formulas and the table don't take a picture you have nothing to memorize till now because we haven't gone here when we'll be going through the syllabus when we are going when we are studying fm in detail i'll be uploading videos right so that time you can you'll be learning step step by step all these formulas as you can see we have all this in your exam the reason why i have copy pasted here is because all this will be there in your exam paper so this formulas if you don't memorize also it's okay but if you memorize what happens is you can save time why because every time you don't have to refer the formula it's it's a waste of time right every time you are referring the formula and then you are doing the form, uh, calculation so it's better that you memorize it and keep in in case you forget then you can refer the formula sheet that's what i do even if the formulas are there right i'll be very honest with you till today up to date whatever it is whether it's my maths exam or economics or whatever it is uh, i have never saw the formula sheet i never had to refer the formula sheet alhamdulillah i have i have remember the formula now i didn't memorize the formula like that like that when i was doing the calculations over and over again that formula was stuck in my mind so i know so still this are the formula what is it economic order quantity we can see miller old model we can see with this two are uh, right asset capital asset pricing model asset beta formula so out of this four capital asset pricing model the last two and asset beta formula this two you have to remember for the long term why because if you are planning to take afm advanced financial management there this two formula will heavily be used it will come there so there also you need it so the first two will not come but the last two will come next we have this formulas also the growth model all this formulas will come in your afm all the formulas listed on this page the growth model gordon's growth approximation the vac fisher formula purchasing power interest rate parity you don't have to take a screenshot you anyway will be given to this throughout the course you will be given to the present value table right this is your present value table discount rate the period right because as an a uh, financial management student we work with currencies we work with cash money in future in present so future money which we uh, when we need to discount it in the present value we need to know the discount factor right that's why this table is there let's say for example 5 uh, years 10% 10% is the discount rate right and uh, period is 5 years so what is the factor 0.621 so for the fifth year cash flow if you have to take 10% and discount it it will be 0.621 discount factor annuity table what is annuity table annuity table is what when we have the same cash flow same cash flow constant cash flow over the years we use annuity table next this is all this is from kaplan textbook which i have taken the content so you can see the content you can take a screenshot if you want chapter 1 to 21 20 is there so 20 chapters are here 
out of the 20 chapters chapter 21 is for question and answers and you are recommended not recommend you have to do the questions and answers there it will help you a lot section b and c questions are there i guess i don't remember the section a is there or not but don't worry throughout the course we'll also go through the, those questions we'll solve it i will solve it in my video and upload it for you guys next we have this is the resource to pass fm what are the resources? the resource is your textbook your revision kit this is the revision kit and this is a kaplan revision kit i have the soft copy of kaplan i don't have the bpp revision kit if anyone wants me to go through bpp or uh, tell me what are the differences between kaplan and bpp for that i need the bpp revision uh, kit or the textbook so if anyone is willing to uh, send me the bpp textbook or the revision kit or both sabyakta0 gmail.com mail me there the textbook and the revision kit of bpp for fm this is till june 2021 you can use it right next we have section this is from your kaplan again the revision only so you can see first we have section a questions section b questions section c questions we have answers to all those three inshallah i'll be solving all the questions for you of the revision kit of fm and last we can see specimen exam this specimen, uh, specimen exam every one of you need to solve it before you go for the final exam because this is your it's like a mock exam how it will be but make sure everyone go through that don't read answers attempt it even if it's section a and b questions you have to do it next these are the questions as you can see remember the seven key area in the day one when i have started fm video the first video on fm if you have seen this video you will be seeing that seven key areas of fm or what financial management function financial and management environment working capital management investment appraisal business finance business valuation and risk management this were the seven key areas of on those seven key areas each type of questions are asked all the three sections section a section b section c questions on all the seven areas even in section c as you can see fm function and environment working capital management you have been given the years also on the right side ex extreme right you can see the year this all are past paper questions only nothing else in the revision kit whatever the questions is given to you is from the past paper so it is included exam years are given to you page number is given to you and the question number and the company name this is from kaplan okay from bpp it might be uh, different the textbook might be different but the revision could obviously it will be the questions only so there will be no different this is a demo how your section a questions will look like this is on financial management function so you can see question one let me read the question out for you in relation to the financial management of a company which of the following provides the best definition of a firm's primary financial objective to achieve long-term growth in earnings to maximize level of annual dividends to maximize wealth of its ordinary share to maximize the level of annual profit this is like a multiple choice question where you have to pick one and this is not a calculation this is a theory calculation also will be asked for that also i have put a question so this is one type a question can come where you have to pick one answer right and since we have not done what is the function of financial management but some of you know what is the answer it is the right answer is what is it the right answer is c maximize the wealth of ordinary shareholder others are also there but they are not primary they are secondary okay they are secondary primary is wealth of maximization of shareholders wealth that is the primary definition next you can see question two this is another type remember i have told you there are types drag and drop hot area multiple responses so this is one of the area question one was uh, just to have to pick one two you have to click in the relevant boxes whether it's financial or non-financial let's say the first maximization of market share whether it's financial non-financial earnings growth financial non-financial you have to select one okay coming to point three we'll be covering all this uh, questions when i go through the revision kit question three now question three is a different type this is a multiple response why multiple response not just one three you have to select which three of the following are the main types of decision facing the financial manager in a company what are the three income investment dividend financing appraisal budget what are the three okay so it is you can take the answer investment financing dividend b 
C, D. These are the three decisions. Main decisions of finance manager. Okay. Next type of question. It's a 53 question. The reason I took this is because I wanted to show you that you have to do calculations. Calculations also will come in section A and B, not just theory. So be ready to do calculation. 57. Now you can see 57. Which of the following is the best explanation? Expression for receivable day. So if you are not good in your uh, formula of receivable day, how will you calculate this? This is why you have to know the formula for what receivable day. Is it there in a formula sheet? No, it was not given. You have to memorize it. You have to know it. What is the formula for the receivable day? Next. Check question number 69. One box is given to you. You have to do some calculations and you have to write the answer to the nearest. 10 units just one answer you have to input this also comes in your section a and section b only this is also one type data entry right then seven two of the following statements are true about cash management model so as you can see the syllabus is from everywhere cash management model will come then eoq will come next coming to section b section b is a little small i hope you can see read it you don't have to read the whole case study. It's just a demonstration, just a snapshot, right? Snapshot. Question one. Section B, there will be three, uh, three uh, scenarios, three case studies. I have just taken one case study. Okay. So first case study, you can see this. The length you can see. At least you can see the length. Right? So this will decide, help you to decide how much you have to read and how much time you have to allocate to reading that information. Remember, Time when you allocate is not only for writing, reading also takes time. Allocate your time wisely. You also have to be a fast reader and able to absorb information. Next, come on the right side of the screen. You can see the question. So this is how your questions will come based on this case study only. But there are total five questions, but uh, due to the space, I was not able to take the screenshot of the five questions. So first three questions came, right? It is similar to section a questions only but this is relating to this case study only okay next section c also you can see on the left hand side is the case study right on the right hand side if you see the questions are different no case study uh, no multiple choice questions you have to write what is it first question asking a calculate the equivalent annual growth in dividends per share earnings per share share price calculation right critically comment on the views expressed by the share person eight marks Part B, six marks, which is a theory question. Identify three key stakeholders in a company and all in the company UUL. Relating to the case study already. Section C, again is a case study. Sorry, uh, identify what government intervention and all those things. So on the right hand side, you can see a small image is there. Right after section A, section B, section C. What is the small image means? Go for there and be for reference. If it's a computer screen, you can see a computer and all. It means word processing, you have to type. So this will tell you which software you have to use, which application, word processing for section B and C. You have to write, no calculation there. Spreadsheet, section A, calculate. So word calculate says you have to do calculation and spreadsheet uh, icon is there. That means you have to use spreadsheet, okay? 20 marks, it's just one question. There will be two questions like this, based on two case study, but since one is there, other will be similar only. Next, standard layout of net present value. Remember, in the beginning of this video, I have told you standard layout. When you have to do calculations, you have to do standard layout. Not everywhere you, you have standard layout. Wherever you have, you have to take it. Wherever you don't have standard layout, you're free, flexible to do work out the calculation in any way. Net present value is the standard layout you have for net present value. Why net present value? Net present value is the main area, main. Being a financial management student, you shall be able to know how to calculate net present value. If you don't, then it's a shame for you. Don't feel bad, but this is the reality. If you don't know how to calculate net present value, please don't go to FM until you know how to do it. That, that much important it is. Even in your AFM, very, very important. If you have seen my AFM videos, guys. So you can see the year first five years cash flows you have to do written in thousands so starting with contribution or you can start with your sales price sell your whatever if sale is given or contribution then deduct your fixed cost so from your income you're deducting your cost 
getting taxable Rem uh, see the wording also you have to be very careful with the words taxable cash flow cash flow they are using and it's taxable on that deduct tax after that ca tax benefit what is ca capital asset tax benefit right scrap value then after tax cash flow discount using 10 percent find the present value after you find the present value deduct your initial investment and get the net present value just see that one line what they wrote net present value is positive and so the investment is financially acceptable this one line also you have to write if it's positive you accept the project if it's negative you don't accept the project why net present value if it's positive means it will increase the shareholders wealth net present value if it's negative means it will not increase the shareholders wealth hence your primary goal was to what primary goal of financial management is what to increase the shareholders wealth everything in financial management is based on that one principle one concept maximization of shareholders wealth if anything in fm in under any topic whatever you do if it does not increase your shareholders wealth you will not do it if it increases shareholders wealth you will do it whether it's your currency uh management or is interest risk interest rate risk management net present value is, comes under investment appraisal right working capital management right or uh, business finance the way you take it everything have ultimate goal is to increase the shareholders wealth only that's it and how it will increase shareholders wealth how will we know whether it will increase shareholders or wealth or not don't worry a long lecture will be given to them we'll do it we'll, when we do fm in detail we'll know it okay so next moving on to the acca marking scheme please check the marking scheme why when you have to check the marking scheme when you are when you have wrote your answer when you're checking your answer along the marking scheme there you have to see the marking scheme not only just the answer this will tell you one additional point how much you have to write and what are the things you need to write about let's say you have missed on taxation or let's say you have missed out on annual contribution now looking at the market scheme you know yes these two things needs to be there because annual contribution is two marks taxation is one mark based on this everything else becomes wrong so you can see even your cost of capital what you used to calculate is itself is two marks so there you have to show it annual contribution two marks fees contribution one mark taxation one mark tax Usually everything is for one mark, but wherever more working is there, it's two or three marks. That is the rule. So tax depreciation, tax benefit is three marks because working is required. You have to know how to calculate this. Scrap value is just one mark. Discount factor, one mark. Net present value, one mark. All this will be one marks only. Comment. Look at the comment that you make, one to two marks. Section B, risk and uncertainty, two to three marks. Discussion of sensitivity and probability, and everything is two to three marks. Usually when you have more than one item to discuss about in a single requirement, like in part B, risk and uncertainty, sensitivity analysis, probability, and you have eight marks or seven marks, marks will be divided equally. That's how you decide how much you have to write. Let's say you have three, uh, let's say you have two things to talk about, right? Sensitivity analysis and probability analysis and total mark is eight marks. So four marks will be for sensitivity analysis, four marks will be for probability analysis. Now, it's not every time that it will be equal like this because some area sometimes when you see when you read the recommend you will understand some areas you have more to talk about there more marks will be there some area maybe one or two marks less points are there to talk about there yes marks will be different but most of the time 98 or 95 percent of the time marks are divided equally between two or three sub requirements in a single requirement that's how it goes next examiner's comment i'm not going to read this examiner's comment that's your job read it all your mistakes what the mistakes you do what are the mistakes the past candidates have done for the reasons why they didn't get the high marks even though something looks easy everything is there in your examiner's comment do read it i advise you go do read it that is the difference between a student who pass successful candidate and a candidate who does not pass successful candidate knows the importance of the experience the other students have done that's why they read the examiner's comment because how will you know what other students have done or not you don't talk with them you don't even know their name how will you know examiner's comment is there take the advantage of it 
But no, most of the candidates will not take the advantage of it. That's why you are failing. Because you don't know where you are going wrong. You don't know where the other candidates have gone wrong. So read the examiner's comment, you will understand. It's not possible that you read each and every examiner's comment, but maybe the latest one, the 2020 March paper, you can read 2021 paper. So the latest ones you can read, one or two years. The very recent ones, okay? One or two sittings, you can read the examiner's comment to see the pattern because there's always a pattern in the mistakes which you do. Remember that a mistake does not happen in one day. There's always a pattern. Some areas students will always be making mistakes. Some areas students are very good. So you will know it. If you are also there, you will know it reading examiner's comment. What are those mistakes? Which will help you to avoid those mistakes later on. So just studying, knowing every, assuming you know everything is not enough. You have to know what other areas you could go wrong. For that, examiner's comment is valuable. Next, exam techniques. Exam technique is very important. If you get completely stuck with a question, what should you do? Hmm, this question. If you get stuck with a question, okay? Flag the question. This is on a computer screen I'm talking about. You have to flag the question. Let's say there are three questions. First question you, are, you have solved. Second question you are not able to solve. Don't get stuck with it. You are running, you are missing with your time. You have limited time. Flag the question, go to the third question, finish the third question and then return to the question number two. Return to it later. That's what is advisable for you to do. Smart students will do it. So the reasons some students pass and some students fail is not because some uh, the, one, the one who pass know more or the one who have failed, they don't, they have a lack of knowledge. The reason why they do is the students who pass, they use smart techniques and the students who have failed, they were not so smart. I mean, they were smart, but they didn't use those techniques at the right time when it was supposed to be used. That is the difference. That's it. The only difference is that the techniques which you use in the exam, no matter what, how much you have studied, sometimes what happens is some of the students, they have studied so much, but when it comes in the exam, their techniques are very poor that they don't, they, they are not able to score it that much. Some I have seen, it's my experience by the way, I have experienced it too and I have seen people also. They don't study so much. They have studied okay, moderate, maybe 50-50. But what happens is, they have this uh, very smart techniques which they use in the exam for which they pass on the border 50 or 51 they manage to pass so it's not always about what you study also your exam techniques matters a lot both in combination has to be used smartly next if you do not understand what the question is asking state your assumptions stating assumptions if it's reasonable you will get your marks okay i will teach you how to state your assumptions throughout this fm session link your answer to the scenario in section c see in section c you have to write when you write don't sound it like that you're copy pasting from your textbook or writing theory parts even if you have to write some theory you have to link to the case study how will you link to the case study use that company's name refer to that company's scenario that's how you are linking okay decide whether you want to attempt the otc's uh, questions at the start or the end of the exam OTC, right otc is your section a questions right you can do it at the end of the exam also, start of the exam also. Or some of you might go through section C and start doing it first. Why? Because long answers, you have to write. Section B and C is nothing, you just have to pick one and you'll be able to do it. Choice is yours, you're flexible on that. I have nothing to say that do this first or do that first. Right? But uh, if it was me, if you are asking for my opinion, if I was you and I was giving this exam now, what I do is I'll be going in that chronological order. I'll be doing section A, section B, and section C. Because I know section A and B are easy, right? I'll be able to do it fast. So once I finish it that, my mind will be relaxed. I know I just have to do section C to deal with. Aram C nicely, I can do it. That's the reason. But what happens on the other way around if I do it? If I start with section C thinking it's long, I have to write so much. And if I struggle there, if I'm not able to write, First, I'll be demotivated. Next, when I come to section A and B, there also I'll be making silly mistakes. Because I have this tension in my mind, right? I have section A and section B to do. So, that's why I go in that order. But it is not uh, for everyone. Choice is yours. You have the freedom to do. From section C you want to do or you can start in that order only. Section A, B and C. But take a wise decision. You know yourself. When you practice, also practice. Take both approach and see which one is better for you, which one you are more comfortable at. 
whether in that order a b c or starting from c and then all starting from b or anything no credit for workings will be given in this questions in this questions mean what section a and b no workings marks for working you don't have to do any working yes roughly you can do somewhere for your own purpose when you have to do calculation thing you can do your workings but there will be no marks for that marks will only be given for section c workings there yes you definitely have to show the workings okay so section a and b either marks are correct two marks incorrect zero marks that's it constructed response long questions right written elements how do you write the right written parts your answer should have a clear structure your answer should not be in any way any order no clear structure has to be there what i am writing first what is my middle part what is my end part brief introduction you have to write introduction means what you are writing about and all i will teach you all this i will teach you don't worry main section and conclusion i will teach you how to do i have taught my afm students now for fm also i'll be teaching in the same manner same way how to start with brief introduction main section and conclusion because there in afm you have to you are supposed to write a report so they are now uh, you know it is in their subconscious mind now that they have to make a report they have to start with introduction and then main section and then conclusion or recommendation so fm also i will teach the same be concise don't beat around the bush don't write too much of lengthy no no things don't explain the same things from different different points be brief to the point it is better to write about a lot of different points from a great deal than a great deal about one or two points less it's better to write small small things be brief write as many points as you can rather than writing one or two points only and explaining those one or two points in a great detail waste of time it is essential if it's computation essential to include all your workings in your answer you might say i will do uh, i have the spreadsheet i have the calculator i will just write the main answer no you have to show the work even the workings will be marked workings will be marked separately the end so that's the end of this video i hope you guys like this video and i i advise like i request all of you please take this great initiative since i have taken this great initiative to help you people out you also take this great initiative to all the students pass this video share this video to all all your friends who is who might be struggling financially right who may not be able to pay for the classes to study fm to have a tutor to coach or a lecturer who are not able to go out in their campus who are stuck at home right but who still wants to give this exam right they have to give an exam but they don't have a lecturer so please through you i want to help those people do share this videos to them too if they don't have access to my channel if they don't know about it that there are someone or such videos for free please do share them that will be a great help for me that's what i want from you people learn and also help others to learn that's the aim of this channel that's it and till then take take care and do watch out my videos and don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you